Time is now 3.30. Call to order this meeting of the Norwood Planning Commission for January 3rd, 2024. Mrs. Talbot, please call the roll. Chairman Powers. Present. Mayor Schneider. Yes, here. Present. Mrs. Sickinger. Present. Mr. Hockney. Present. Mr. Seward. Present. Item B, approval of the agenda. Any amendments to the agenda? Offer one at item F3, receive and file letters from Stephanie Carruthers, Emily Gronauer, Jessica Quellhorst, Gary Shanklin, and Michael Toro. I have a second to amend the agenda. I'll make a second to amend the agenda. Ms. Stowers, please call the roll. Chairman Towers? Yes. Mayor Schneider? Yes. Mrs. Sickinger? Yes. Mr. Hockney? Yes. Mr. Seward? Yes. Moving on to item C, nomination and election of chair. Do have any nominations for chair? Nominate Noah Powers for chair. Do I have a second? Second that. Mrs. Town, please call the roll. Chairman Powers. Abstain. Did you say my name? Yes. Yes. Mayor Schneider. Yes. Mrs. Sickinger. Yes. Mr. Hockney. Yes. Mr. Thurer. Yes. Moving on to item B. I do have a nomination for vice chair. I nominate Bernice. Bernard Seward. I'll second that. Mrs. Towers, please call the roll. Chairman Powers. Yes. Mayor Schneider. Yes. Mrs. Dickens. Yes. Mr. Hockney. Yes. Mr. Seward. Yes. Well, I appreciate all your votes and congratulations, Mr. Seward. <laughs> Uh, moving on to item E, approval of minutes of the November 1st, 2023 meeting. I have a motion to approve. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. Do I have a second? I'll second that. Ms. Stout, please call the roll. Chairman Powers? Yes. Mayor Schneider? Yes. Mrs. Sickinger? Yes. Mr. Hockney? Yes. Mr. Stewart? Yes. Moving on to item F, new business. Number one, Ventura Village Group, LLC, owner 4401, 4405, Allison Street, Norwood, Ohio, 45212, Hamilton County, Auditor Book 651, page 0050, parcel 0272, private combination of lots, book 651, page 005, parcel 0150 and 0173. Is requesting to split the new lot into four separate lots facing Portland Avenue. If approved, suggested addresses would be 1938, 1940, 1942, and 1944, all Portland Avenue. Information is included in your packet, uh, including uh, certified surveys of the proposed lot splits. Any discussion? Do we have a representative of the Venture Group? Maybe yes. take some questions on this. I am Pete Ventura Sr. And here to represent us. Okay. Uh, Junior is on the way. But, uh, so I'll shoot some questions at you. Tom, um, I have a question about lot four. Why it's why is it bigger than lot one, two, and three? It's not a public hearing. Okay. Just just need to state your name. Right. We'll swear at you later. Peter Ventura Jr. Spell Ventura. V E N T U R A. Thank you. 
Lot four, the corner lot, looks like it's much larger than lot one, two, and three. Yeah. Um, I think that's just so it doesn't sit. I feel like it's sitting on the street more. I'm trying to get it a good setback from both sides. Um, Still public sidewalk, correct? Yes. On, on well, Allison, on Allison and on Court. My other question would be, where, where will the AC unit, the condenser, where will that be placed on this lot? We've had questions about AC units on the corner lot like that. Where will it be? On uh, the back side. I'm not sure if that will be on the ground or mounted off the back. Okay. I'm planning to put it in the back. We're really not have room on the either of the other sides, the way you know to get the driveway in and get the grass. So yeah, it'll, it'll have to be in the back. Well, when you said the the back, if we're looking at it, uh... <clears throat> so I'm considering the front facing Cortland, those four properties. Front facing. So yeah, I'll okay. have to be the uh, yeah, opposite back. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. So the driveway on the corner lot will be between lot three and lot four. Correct. All the drivers will be on the left hand side as you look at the front. That was kind of important to us here too. To, we really wanted to get the garages at the back of the house. Not, I, mean, I don't think there's any code against that in Norwood, but most of the houses you see in Norwood don't have the garage you know, facing the street. Um, so we're trying to maintain the look within the neighborhood at the same time. Any other questions? Well, I'll ask one more. Just the time frame of if this is approved. What's your time frame on on coming back with some plans and designs? And we've already preliminarily looked at some interior designs, so we can kind of start to move forward on that. Mm -hmm. um, and I would say we I don't know when do you think we could really break ground with them. Um, Within three months, three to four months, I would think. Yeah. These are all single for permitting, permitting in and the They're all single all table family. Family. Yeah. That's the approximate square foot. <laughs> uh, I think it's 870 per, per level. What is it here? Square feet per floor. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Any further questions? Well, I'm, I'm sorry, one follow up question. You talked about the driveways coming out to the street. Will there be street parking in front of each one of these? A, a street parking spot in front of each of them? It won't eliminate parking all the way down in front of these homes, correct? Yeah, because you still have 25 feet between the driveways. So, uh, yeah, at least one car in there. You know, okay. If not two. All right. Yep. The nice part across the street from that, that house faces Allison as well. So, there's, it's not like there's five houses over there that are competing for parking as well. There's only one house on that corner, which is good. Any further questions? Gentlemen, anything else you think is important for us to consider? Um, not really. We're excited to hopefully get, get this thing going. I think you guys remember what used to be there and uh, you know, trying to uh, create more single family homes in that area and also take into mind what's going to be going in across the street at the same time and try to make it look nice and blend at the same time as we build it out.
Nick discussion. May I make a motion? You may. I would make a motion removed that the Planning Commission approve the lot split, split as requested and assign the suggested addresses. That is my motion. Do I have a second? I'll second it. Ms. Tell, would you please call the roll? Chairman Powers? Yes. Mayor Schneider? Yes. Mrs. Sickinger? Yes. Mr. Hockney? Yes. Mr. Seward? Yes. Motion passes. Moving on to item F2, discussion regarding the food costs. Uh, this is an item we had on our agenda a while back, Mr. Skelly. Can you refresh us a little bit? Um, yeah, we may have had some initial discussions for it. So staff, um, I believe a couple of the counselors have been, I guess, discussing this to some degree over the last, I guess, a couple of years. Um, we've bounced around a couple of different uh, policy provisions for regulating these um, activities, whether through zoning or through licensing. Um, I think at this point, and again, maybe it's coming from um, more council, but I'm not too sure if there is a uh, desire now to put something forward, at least for zoning. So um, I think at this point, staff, whether it's you know myself in the community development, building department, or public works, just trying to figure out what's the best option. Um, I think throughout the last couple of years, we had discussions with the police, with the fire department, as to various concerns that we have for these things. Right now, um, unfortunately, Mark Reed's not here, but if I can capture his concern is that we have sometimes, um, and I'll use the example of a, uh, a gas station where um, that activity is being conducted from a particular lot, we have another activity um, which may or may not be appropriate using up parking spaces and conducting something which has potential both nuisance and a fire hazard onto itself, not to mention the more general concern that you have um, this otherwise mobile activity being conducted from a stationary law location, which is um, contrary to how state law provides for the regulation of these uses. So um, without getting in too much into the, the weeds of this, um, you know, staff just wanted to get direction as to is it uh, percolating enough to a concern that I guess the Planning Commission wants to be involved and provide direction to staff on this. Mr. Skelly, you, you kind of alluded to it but didn't say it directly. Do you know what that regulation is in, from the state in terms of what the food trucks might be stationary at the location? Correct. So um, no more than 40 days. And then they would be required under the state law to, to move? To move. Okay. Thank you. I believe the mayor had a question. Uh, my, my biggest concern with food trucks is taking business away from brick and mortar restaurants in the city. And it's not, not anything against entrepreneurs and people that are trying to start a restaurant. It has more to do with the investment that people make in the community and to, to run a restaurant and then having a food truck pull up in front of them and taking away their business. So that, that's always been my biggest concern with food trucks. So I still feel like the city should regulate the food truck business in some way, shape, or form. What's, what's the best thing? And I know we have representatives from the fire department here. They've had some concerns with different issues with food trucks. I don't think we have anybody from the health department here, but um, the way they're, it seems, it seems like their, their uh, regulation, their license, licensing covers Hamilton County so they can go anywhere in Hamilton County, including Norwood, they don't have to meet any requirements. And then some of the permanency of them is a challenge, I think, at times too. So but those are my concerns about it. If you're looking for direction from me as a member of the planning commission, I think that the city should be looking at what what is a logical you know regulation of it without hindering the small business entrepreneurial spirit of it. Yeah. 
Yeah, and I think that's part of it. So I, I believe there might have been um, during the COVID period where um, the public health department was, you know, permanently sensitive to the use of these businesses. But at this point, the way I read uh, the existing requirements, um, if that was being fully enforced, it wouldn't be a non-issue because they would be required to move every 40 days um, from a location which would be on the street, not on private property. So to me, we could definitely um, put more uh, detailed wording in our zoning ordinance and stuff. I, I think there's a bigger issue, as you mentioned, that it necessarily is not the best fit if we're trying to promote our own local economy, restaurants, cafes, etc., and we have these competing businesses. So, um, like I said, it just matters how much does the feed want to get into regulating these things, including up to uh, licensing. So, good point. I, I, I understand what Vic was saying, but I guess my, my biggest concern is if we're representing that the fact by letting him go, that Norwood has approved the fact that they can serve safe food. And I've asked you this before, hey, do they have a health department approval? I mean, whether or not they're brick and mortar or a, a, a van, mm -hmm. they're still serving food to individuals. And I think the assumption could be that Norwood is protecting that by giving them a certification that it passes the health department. Do we? I, unfortunately, I can't answer that as to what is the um, public health department's current policy. And how I, they I don't know why they would not have to do that. And I think the second thing is, if they have a permanent electric hookup, which I know some are going in that direction, you know, are they being permitted by IBI here in the city? And do they have that shown so that everybody knows that they've been certified? I, I think there's, I, I don't know all the laws, but there are some laws out there for temporary facilities that I would think they have to uphold. Correct. I think, yeah. And I'm all for business, any kind of business. So um, I just think everybody's got to follow rules. Yeah. And I think that was the flashpoint that got the ire of the building department saying, hold on a second, now you're providing for utilities, making it a more permanent use on this law. Is, well, that, is that location the only problem location that you're aware of? Um, I've, at least me personally, I've seen few gas stations where they have like a food truck there. Um, sometimes they move around a bit. Um, but it, it's just, to me, if you want to start from principled concern, as the member was discussing, it's having these things on like a separate lot on private property, conducting a business on a more, I would say, semi-permanent basis. So that, that's the first concern, where it's, it's not, if it's a food truck by its very definition and term, it should be mobile, it should be transitory, it should be in and out, you know, even at a particular location. So we have a food truck usually visiting City Hall in front for lunch periods, and then they come back next week on a Friday or whatever, but it shouldn't be um, sitting out for several days and definitely, well, beyond, beyond 40. As, as you stated, the state law does require them to be mobile. Yeah. So do you believe that the gas station is leasing to those two food trucks and allowing them? Do they own that property? Uh, is that I, I don't know what that, that relationship is. I just know that the, the food trucks are standing. Like my, my biggest concern food trucks is that they do not have to meet the same requirements that our brick and mortar restaurants do. If there's peeling paint on one of our brick and mortar restaurants, they can be written up by the building department for failing to meet property maintenance standards. If you have peeling paint on a, a food truck, it doesn't doesn't have to meet that's that cool. same standard. It's that's cool. fine. That's a cool food truck. So, you know, I, I don't think we should be giving an unfair advantage to businesses that are highly mobile and all they need to do to leave Norwood is turn the key and drive away. You know, I, I think that they are required to be mobile by the state. They want to be mobile. And I think that the best place for them is, is on the street uh, with other vehicles. I also know that the health department in, um, inspects the brick and mortars. So we are holding them to two, if the health department isn't 
actively inspecting food trucks. That's on level 10 here. That, that's correct. And there's also uh, noise issues typically associated with like, generators outdoors, um, creating additional smoke uh, and noise. So one of the things that brought it up also for the building department is an ordinance that says you're not to have outdoor sales unless it, there are specific things that you may have, like flowers in the summer, pumpkins in the fall, Christmas tree. But it says no outdoor sales. So that's also another conflict for the building department trying to, that's one of the reasons they were asking about. What are we supposed to do? Well, um, I would like to ask Mr. Skelly to prepare uh, some zoning regulations based on these comments. Uh, that we could discuss that at our next planning commission meeting. Sounds like we already have. Sounds like we already have zoning regulations that are that yeah. are either need to be fully enforced or not fully enforced. Looking at new regulations. Is if you're not going to enforce the ones that are on the books right now, if the state says 40 days and you have to go, yeah, that's that's I, I just don't be notifying them. Yeah, I'm just not sure if Mark Reeves wanted something beyond what we have right now. So I, I mentioned, or I believe the, the 40 days would, would have to be enforceable by the health district. Yeah, and this would this would allow uh, the building department to make an or no outside, I mean, our no outside sales is something that we had businesses through COVID that did not set up outdoor seating areas and, and do that because they, they weren't allowed to do that. That was in our code, so they're not allowed to do outside sales. But then we have food trucks that are doing outside sales everywhere. So we've got a double standard. For the people who've made the big investment and, and their brick and mortar, they couldn't do that during COVID when they were asking to do those things. So, so there were some exceptions, but but realistically. So would the out, outdoor sales take care of all the food trucks, or is that just the ones that aren't moving? Because uh, food trucks serve a purpose. I, I have read the outdoor sales prohibition to be uh, more in, in the terms of not necessarily from a vehicle, uh, but setting up, you know, an outdoor flea market sort of thing, or selling uh, shirts or sport paraphernalia outdoors. That's your interpretation. That it is. So it needs to be defined, clarified. Uh, I think I think that clarification will put the building department in a better position to make an enforcement. Yeah. Then I would agree. The, rat, the path you're going in. <laughs> Mr. Skelly, if you'll provide something in advance for the commission numbers to look at before our February meeting, we'll add this to old business at the next meeting. Any additional discussion? Seeing none, we will move on to item F3. Could I have a motion to receive and file the letters? I'll make a motion to receive five communication letters. Do I have a second? Second that. Ms. Couch, please call the roll. Chairman Powers? Yes. Mayor Schneider? Yes. Mrs. Sickinger? Yes. Mr. Hockney? Yes. Mr. Stewart? Yes. Moving on to item G1, old business. Review proposed ordinance language amending for 11 planning and zoning code relating to short-term residential lodging businesses. We also received comments from Chief Building Official Dan Bly and from Mrs. Town. Uh, Mr. Bly's comments are black, Mrs. Town's comments are purple. Uh, discussion on the proposed ordinance. Item for 
discussion. Um, section 4 amends uh, codified ordinance 115 1.42 table 2 list of permitted conditional use and accessory use for primarily residential and non-residential uses by removing uh, or clarifying rather short term minerals uh, would not be eligible in the R1, R2, R3, and the RMX district, but would be uh, permitted use in the O, CBD, uh, neighborhood business district, general business district, and then allowable under the PUD process in uh, M1 and M2 districts. Um, as I've thought about this, I have looked at some of the codes offered uh, by other jurisdictions and noted that some of those allow for owner occupied uh, of uses so that if a owner occupant wants to lease a room or the second part of a multifamily, um, that would be allowable. And I would like to kind of hear thoughts from the other commission members on uh, that sort of arrangement. When I, when I look at that, I don't see that as entirely different than when the Board of Zoning Appeals uh, would allow another home-based business, what does that be like? Um, I know recently we had a, uh, a hair salon. Allowed. So it's a secondary use to the primary residential, um, which I think is, is kind of different. My initial concerns with allowing them in the residential components, which is that it's a, a pure business, um, if it's renting out the entire property, it's not an owner-occupied unit. It's an owner-occupied unit renting out a portion of the premises, then it is it's not primarily business at that point. I agree with you. I absolutely agree with you. I had several um, of our residents reach out to me, and they're really upset because they have purchased these homes many years ago and have been doing running a clean business, doing everything right, and they didn't even know there was something on the books that said you needed to register for an Airbnb and certain things needed to be done. Um, two of them specifically are beautiful. They're absolutely beautiful. They've never had a police call, never had a fire call, never had parties. Um, she does live upstairs. She does, She won't put up with the nonsense. So I, I think we may be speaking about the same situations. <clears throat> I think Mike, Mike brought this to our attention at the very beginning, saying, do we want to take the license approach or do we want to take the zoning approach? After reading Dan Bly, there's no doubt. I think Dan's saying, why don't, why don't you take the license approach? Take it one by one instead of making a blanket statement. Because then I read all the emails, and where I thought there was only three active, it sounds like there's a lot more active. But, that's what was documented. That's why. There's 22. Maybe we ought to rethink versus moving this on. Maybe we rethink it and we go to the license approach that says we can issue a license and we can revoke the license. Because, and again, I'm glad fire and police are here. I'm not trying to give them more work, but at the end of the day, that's how is zoning enforced it anyway? You know, it's a, uh, it just seems like if. I understand if you have some people that have invested, and it is a benefit to the community if they're truly used that way. Unfortunately, but I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You're, you're, I mean, we're the planning commission. We make decisions, and we've, we've decided to go down a certain path. And now that people have sent letters to us, and, and that we've had comments come back to us, we're supposed to change directions and, and make it a licensing instead of a that sounds like too much common sense. That's that, I, I, I'm being facetious, of course. I totally agree with you. If we're if that's the path, if we're going down one path as a planning commission, and then it's recognized, well, wait a minute, we need to look at this a little bit more closely as we have, and we need to move to a licensure. And I think Tom would probably agree with me too. It's making perfect sense to me here as we discuss this, and you know the letters that we're receiving and the people that we're talking to are saying. Why, why, are we, why would we do it this way? So I, I'm, I totally agree with you, Brian. Well, I'm actually one of the people that kind of pushed to say, keep them the hell out of our zones, because that's where my house is. And I don't want to live next to a party house. I think I said 
pretty much all those words. Um, the reality of it is everybody who seems like they live next to one of these say it's actually, in fact, better because the people are taking better care of their houses because they're an asset. And, uh, you know, something I hadn't thought about. So I'm starting to feel like maybe I moved a little hastily. I don't, I don't own any. I don't have any friends that own them. Um, I stay in them, but I don't. So at the end of the day, I'm just... I mean, I do believe in Norwood as a residential, for, except in the other zones, for R1, R2, R3 are residential zones. And you like the community aspect. So, I mean, is this really detrimental that? I, I don't know, they've been around a long time. I guess we could find some articles that say that, you know, it's destroyed the community effect. I haven't seen this. Uh, I think we've all Googled short-term rentals and tried to figure out what what they're doing. So anyway, I'll quit talking. I, again, after reading Dan Bly, who I really pushed to make sure he read that, the, the, the draft ordinance, because he, he is the first line of enforcement. And he brings up a lot of questions about it's gray. Yeah. And I know Dan long enough to know that he's a guy who doesn't like, if he can stay away from it, he likes to be able to, to say to somebody, just I know as the building department does, this is the rules, we're going to follow the rules. Okay, I'll stop. So I had someone reach out to me um, by the name of Christopher Hinkle, and he is in charge of the Cincinnati Short-Term Rental Association. And a lot of what I, I believe prior to this was that they were problematic. What the city of Cincinnati has done is re they have their own association and they want to have regulation. They want to be regulated. They want to have the inspections. They want to have it licensed uh, because it keeps everybody safe. And the association for the city of Cincinnati said they'd be happy to come and chat with us at any time and go over some of the ways that they got over the problems they had. He's, he also stated that any property that is a problem, they shut them down. They, they close it down and it's no longer an issue. But with proper regulation, you can avoid the problems. My concern of that would be when you say proper regulation, that we put the right amount of teeth in whatever we do so that we can shut them down and not shut them down after three months and and all sorts of more problems happen throughout that summer and everybody in the neighborhood is up at arms because the city couldn't do it as efficiently and as quickly as we should. That's, that's my big concern. And, and if, if we're painting this picture, I hear this of, well, it's all hunky-dory and we don't have problems, but there are problems and I've seen neighborhoods that have had problems with this and every weekend it's somebody else and it's huge and it's and we need to make sure that if the city does go with the licensure way, that we we absolutely have a way to shut them down quickly. And there's civil rights involved, and I'm sure the law director and the deputy law director and all our legal team would have to look at that closely on how to how to put real teeth in it and make it hurtable, because that's the only way that we'll be able to do it right. So Airbnb actually has some legislation in place, and. The city of Cincinnati stated that some of the things they do is the neighbors are aware of, you know, the rentals, the Airbnbs that are in their community. And if there is a party, they not only contact the owner of the place immediately, but Airbnb has a website. You go in there and they take care of it. They move forward and, you know, close it down. That's one, one operation. Mm -hmm. They have rules and regulations. There's no teeth. There, there's... They have the ability to say, you can't use our website. You can't, but they don't have any, there's no real teeth in it. There needs to be something, the city has the ability to put something in there that makes it really good. We would like to take a look at what Cincinnati did do as far as their enforcement, since you're saying they were going to shut some down. I'd love to see what they got on the books, and if it's something we could mimic very easily. It would be very easy to do. I actually have those. I have their legislation, and if there, if we could fine tune some of it. If, if you would provide that to me and Mr. Skelly, mm -hmm. uh, we'll take a look at that. 
um, as a licensing scheme, it wouldn't require uh, any approval by the Planning Commission, but uh, we can start taking a look at that and then provide an update on where that is since this would fall this Planning Commission issue at our next meeting. Do you have an interest in speaking with the representative? Absolutely. When would you like to have that at our next meeting? Oh, uh, directly to the Planning Commission? Mm -hmm. Um, I, if, we're not, unnecessary. if we're not going to take any action, mm -hmm. I don't think that would be necessary, but I, I would like to have the opportunity to okay. speak with him and, and Mr. Skelly as well. Oh, I'll make that happen. Great. Any further discussion? Hearing none. Move on to the... Wait, wait, wait. Oh, is this... Go ahead. Leave the gentleman in the back. Yeah. I just had a question in regards to... Please, please come up to the mic. Sorry, my name is Antonio Poole. Well, yeah, I wanted to just discuss. I had a question regarding the Airbnb incident because I own Airbnb as well. I just wanted to know. Oh, sorry. I'm, uh, can you hear me? I just wanted to know how is uh, Airbnb kind of affecting a community because we feel like guys that own them that it brings uh, value add to the neighborhood. I think it would be better having Airbnb than just having like group homes sometimes in an area. I think that could lower the radar, be more problematic because we don't want to have parties inside these Airbnbs. It's, you should put a lot of money in them. We're doing some right now and outside of uh, Norwood as well, we're doing about 150,000 renovations in these houses. So we're not looking for tenants to destroy the homes. So that, that's just a question you all know, like. If, would you prefer to see guys that own Airbnb play like group homes? Because everybody, we are in it to make some money from these investments that we put into the community. Thank you, Mr. Cole. Mr. Silver? This is just Noah. I know you're going to look at some things with Mike, but we keep deferring any kind of tax rate. Uh, that, I believe, that would be uh, something that could go hand in hand with any uh, licenses. Okay. So I have a question for Mr. Poole. Um, would, in, other, in the city of Cincinnati, is there a licensing fee for you to register yours? Yeah, it's just like rent. Mm -hmm.